Hello, good evening. You're welcome again to Online Healing Crusade. We're so glad to have you. Hallelujah. Today is another day uh, with God meeting you. Uh, every day we have this uh, program at 6 o'clock if you are joining us for the first time. I believe God is going to meet you in a powerful way today. What you need to do is just open up your heart that God is sending his up. Look, God sends people to people, especially his anointed man. And here is an anointed man here that God has loaded with the word. He has received a message from God. I want to tell you something. He receives messages from God every day for this program because why? God sends him. And God gave him the word for each day. And if we will believe that word, just receive it, something is going to happen in your life. Hallelujah. Do you have any ailment? There is nothing impossible for God. There is nothing impossible before the anointing. And there is no distance or barrier in the realm of this world. Where you are, the Holy Ghost is there. And He knows you are there. We may not see you. The man of God may not see you. But God knows you are there. The Holy Ghost knows you are there. And something great is going to happen because He is the doer. Hallelujah. Just sit back and enjoy God. God bless you. Join me without wasting time tonight. Welcome the servants of the Lord, the evangelist, we will defend you. Now God bless you and stay connected. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We thank God for another opportunity to bring the word of life to you in Jesus' name. It's been a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord and God has been doing wonderfully uh, since the beginning of this program. We ask that um, you just sit and relax and uh, Let's enjoy God again for another time today. Let's look at uh, Matthew, the book of Matthew. Chapter 9. From verse 1. Matthew chapter 9 from verse 1. And he entered into a ship and passed over and come into his own city. And behold, they are brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good share, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemed. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say thy sin be forgiven thee, or to say arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take off thy bed, and go unto thy house. And he arose, and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God which has given such power unto men. Hallelujah. Now, you see, one of the reasons I believe the scripture has been written is to give us a very good example, like worked out example, how we ought to do what we need to do, how we should behave, how can we receive the same miracles that Jesus Christ uh, perform in these days okay uh, those are the reasons I believe why God permitted the Word of God to be able to be written down so that we that we are here in the world today uh, we can learn principles of the operations of God from the Word of God are you getting what I'm saying so let's look at this one now as one of the worked out examples of the, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ and then we see how did this miracle happen and how can we receive such miracles also in our day now one of the things you must understand here is that the Bible said he came to his own city his own city like where you should call is this family house citizenship nativity his domain among his people and his acquaintance those who have known him maybe from childhood to the time he got to maturity at the age of 30 and could uh, start ministry and start the work of God but such people are the people that have known him 
uh, when he had not started ministry, because if somebody lived for 30 years and he has not started ministry and he just started after 30, those who have known him from age 1 to 30, they will still be alive, you know. The uh, majority of people that are uh, maybe like the age mate of his dad, physical dad, I mean Joseph, and age mate of Mary, uh, his, his mother, and then his brothers, siblings, whatever. So there will be a lot of people that really know Jesus Christ in and out, as you might say, physically, not spiritually. So that is the kind of setting of where he is now, where this administration is about to take place. And the Bible says he came into his own city. And behold, they are brought to him a man that was sick of palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, and thy sins be forgiven thee. If you look at this same example now from other um, uh, writers of the Bible, like Mark, Luke, and John, you find out that um, this was the same account of the man that was having palsy, but was brought by his friends, and they have to open the roof of the house where Jesus Christ was ministering because the house has been jam packed both inside and outside, and even around the window. There's no way you can enter into the house by the time he came. So now, uh, with his friends, four that bore him, that is, were bearing him and carrying him around. So uh, I'm sure when they now got to the place and there was no uh, means of getting inside, uh, he instructed them, I think, that don't take me back home this way, please. We have come this far. Let's go all the way to make sure we are get to this Jesus today. Uh, can you go and find me a ladder and then climb across the house and climb to the top of the roof? And then some of you find a way of uh, making sure you remove some of the tiles on the roof so that uh, you can find a hole that can, at least can take me. And then you carry me up there and then find some things to tie around this cloth with which you have carried me to this place on the bed. So find a cloth you put on all the four edges of the uh, cloth and then you'll be tying it like that and then drop me as if you are dropping a bucket in a well. So drop me like that, like that gradually until I can land from the roof down to the place where Jesus Christ is ministering. And just make sure you place me at a vantage point that I will be right in front of him. He will see me. When he sees me, my problem is solved. I know you can't see me in this condition and leave me alone. I just need God, desperate. I need God, please, I need God. Only God can help me out, please, I need God. Take me to him. Get me to where he is, where he will be able to see my problem, and then he will have mercy on me, and he will be able to heal my body, save my soul. Please don't drop me here and don't take me back home. Climb that place. Remove the roof. Remove any tire there. Drop me down, please. After that, I'm sure you can go. The rest is in between me and Jesus. I know Jesus will not seem like this and leave me this way. Please get me to him. Please. And his friends consented. They were ready to help him and then to you know, lift him up onto the roof and then drop him down in front of everyone uh, before Jesus Christ. So when they did that, that was what the Bible meant when the, the Bible said, and Jesus seen their faith. What was the faith he saw? That their ability, audacity, uh, uh, aggressiveness, undauntedness, uh, doggedness, that made them not to take no for an answer. Therefore, the fact that the whole house has been jumped out, the window, the door everywhere, there's no where you can have access to Jesus. So they look for a way where there seems to be no way by themselves because they really needed a breakthrough. And they're not going to get that breakthrough if they take no for an answer. By the time they go to the door and the door is already everywhere is filled up, they can go home and feel that there's nothing we can do again. Uh, since we have tried our best, we are not getting anything done, so let's just take you back home. But I'm sure he's the one that said no, 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 no. Taking me back home, we will stop the problem. We have, we have managed to get here. Let's find another way of making sure we get inside the building, through the roof. And they did that. That action was what Jesus Christ saw and they said, seeing their faith. So it means faith is perceptible. 
Faith is visible. Faith can be felt. Faith can be seen. Faith can be, you know, can be touched. Jesus saw the action of these people and he could add two and two together. Four of you have to look for a way of getting this man down here. Removing the roof of somebody's house just because you want to get this guy here. You guys, you have really tried. And what you did is faith now. So and no man comes to God by faith. God will not say, get out of this place. So we have to do something about this case. And uh, the first thing Jesus Christ was going to say, he said, he said to the person sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. He didn't call him enemy. He didn't call him uh, whatever. He said, Son, family member, thy sins be forgiven. So that means you came for sickness to be healed. But I think we've got to deal with your sin first, is then we'll be able to deal with the sickness. Because this sickness did not come to you like the way headache and malaria come to people. This sickness has come to you as a result of your sinful nature. So you have exposed yourself to the devil through that sin, and he has come into your life to cause this paralysis. But if you can ask for forgiveness from the Lord, if you can look for salvation of your soul, if you can yield your soul and your heart unto God, God coming into your heart to save you, then God can also heal your body. So that's what you mean by son. You didn't call him enemy. Say, son, be of good share. Rejoice. No sadness again. You are going to where the solution has come to your problem. And he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. He has not even allowed him to confess when he has forgiven him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That was if we confess our sin faithful, it's God to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all rations. This guy has not even confessed. Jesus has already forgiven him. He has given him forgiveness ahead of confession. He has not said, Father, forgive me for what I've done all the days of my life. He said, you are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. You have come this far. Your sins are forgiven. Ah! And the Bible says, whosoever the son shall remit his sin or not, he shall be remitted in heaven. His sins are remitted. It doesn't matter how bad and how wicked those sins are that have really brought those situations that you find now, find themselves in this ugly situation, not being able to stand up from the bed and all that. You don't know for how many weeks, for how many months, for how many years he's been in that condition. But that God focus on him and say, your sins are forgiven. I am talking to somebody here today. God is saying unto you, your sins are forgiven. Come to the Master. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold on to the hem of his garment. Hold on to the horn of the altar. And cry unto the Lord, save my soul. I have not walked a good walk before you. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord, his power and his anointing will keep operating and making this word to reach you in the name of Jesus. So what Jesus Christ did here, was to give this person uh, hope and say, your sins are forgiven. doesn't matter what the kind of sin, whether small, big, or medium, your sins are forgiven. And he did not say one sin, he said sins, they are forgiven. So how, how it doesn't matter the number now. God has put forgiven in all his sin. You said he's a smoker before, he said forgiven. You said this man used to be a drunkard, God just write forgiven. You said this man is a womanizer, God just put forgiven. He said, this man, oh no, his life has not just been full of, you know, adultery, fornication, thuggery, you know, incorrigible, no problem. The Lord just had God's put forgiven across it. You know, you can say somebody, oh, this, oh, this, oh, this, oh, this, this are his debt. And the day they just write, use red and write cancelled. All those debts are cancelled. That means they are cancelled. But now... God is saying, forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. All sins that you have sinned, forgiven. So there are sicknesses in life that they are not just ordinary sicknesses, they are sin-related sicknesses. You understand what I'm saying? If somebody has liver sclerosis and his liver is just bloating up and getting bigger and bigger because of the kind of way he has been drinking alcohol, if he has not drunk alcohol, his liver will have remained the same like every other person. You get what I'm saying? There are people whose lungs have been destroyed because of the kind of things they are smoking. There are people that uh, they don't have a long lifespan anymore 
their lifespan has been shortened because of the kind of uh, uh, reckless lifestyle they have lived. Some have contacted you know, sexually transmitted disease. Some have contacted all sorts of you know, lifestyle disease, like you know, the kind of life you live, bring you this kind of sickness and disease. The kind of what you eat, the kind of what you drink, the kind of what you smoke, the kind of atmosphere you expose yourself to. So, but Jesus Christ said, your sin, all your sins are forgiven. So he needs to clear that sinful side of the nature and then bring in the healing that his body needs. His soul needs to be healed, healed of sin. And then his body needs to be healed, healed of sickness. You understand? Just like uh, Psalm 103, verse 3. It said, Blessed be the Lord our God who has uh, for all his benefits. Okay? We should bless him for all his good benefits that he has done for us. And what are the benefits? Who forgiveth all our sins, and then who healeth all our diseases. So here God is forgiving this man of his sin, and is also ready to heal him of his diseases. Verse 3, And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemed. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye in your heart? Why are you thinking this kind of evil in your heart? For whether it is easier to say that sin be forgiven thee, or to say arise and walk. So, he is trying to tell them, I could have really said arise and walk, but I needed to deal with something before I deal with this sin, sickness. That's why I had to go through that route. Okay? But uh, you should know that the Son of Man have the right and the power and the ability to forgive people of their sins. And once he has forgiven them of their sins, they are forgiven. So you people, you are not the one to determine what is going to happen to this man. It is God's mercy that is showing forth here. And God is ready to show mercy unto the man and to release him from whatever sickness his sin has brought to him. He will be delivered from the sin, sinful nature, and then he will be healed of his body so that he can serve God with a better life and a better body. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, just so that you might know that the Son of Man has power on right to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of the pastors, so he has finished talking with the Pharisees and Sadducees. He now faced the man, the man he has told before that uh, your sins are forgiven. He now moves to the second stage of the program of God for that man. He said, arise, take up thy bed, and go into thy home. <laughs> Arise, take up thy bed, and go home. Go to your house. Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Three instructions. The first one will require him to make an effort to live where, where he has been lying down for many years and he has not gotten any help to be able to stand up. But the word that will make him to be able to stand up is the word that Jesus has not spoken to him. When he says, Arise. Arise from where situation and circumstances of life has put you in frustration and prostration. Arise from the bondage that the enemy has put you into. Arise from the prison house where the enemy has locked you up. Arise from where you have been handicapped over these years while you remain on the bed. Stooling on the bed, we win on the bed, doing everything on the bed, bed reading. Arise from that situation. Get out of that stuff. Jesus heals you. God has healed you. Jesus is your healer. Rise up from that situation. Once you respond by faith to that word, then you will have to turn around and pick the clothes or the mat or the bed with which it has been brought to that place so that what they used to carry you here, you will carry it out. So you need energy to arise. You need another level of energy to be able to carry something. God is already projecting the life of the man beyond inability to stand up. He will have ability to stand up. After getting ability to stand up, we have ability to carry a bed. After carrying a bed and lifting it up, he will have ability to be able to keep carrying it on until we carry it back home. So everybody that's seen that, I thought when you were going the other time, you were being carried on this uh, bed. How come you are the one carrying the bed here now? Is because what makes me to be able to not to be able to stand up and carry my bed myself, or not to, to be able to walk like others without needing bed, is because of the sickness. But you see me that I carry my bed, you already know the story. That means that Jesus has met me and he has healed me. So God wants to give him a testimony among the others. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I believe the word of God, the power of God, and his anointing uh, is able to give us the same miracle as this man has gotten here. Okay. So let's read on verse 3. And behold, uh, 
And behold, certain of the scribes and Pharisees themselves, this man is blasphemous. And Jesus, knowing him, they are thus said, What thinketh evil of in your heart? Is it easier to say this or to say, Arise and walk? And, uh, but that you may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the sick of the person, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thy house. Verse 7. And he arose and departed to his house. So you see, that's the most important aspect of miracle power of God. When God gives you the ability, when he speaks his word and say, Arise, you got to obey that word. You should not look around and see, Will I be able to rise? Since I have not risen before, how does man know that I am going to rise? He is giving me something I cannot do. No, God will never give you what you cannot do. He gives you the ability to be able to stand up. You understand what I am saying? He gives you the ability to be able to uh, operate with the word of life. You understand me? Now, you need to obey the instruction of God. You need to obey the commandment of God. You need to obey that word because that word has power. The Bible says, I watch over my word to perform it. So it means God has the ability to perform whatever it tells you to do. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that God is here today, right here with you. And as we pray together today, I'd like you not to depend on the way you've been feeling before, but look at everything as I have to obey the word of God. And since the Lord said I should rise up, I'm rising up. And when you take a step of faith like that, you see the supernatural hand of God work for you. The atmosphere is charged right now, and the Spirit of the Lord is ready to reach out to you in healing and deliverance. Shall we pray? If there any sickness in your body, I'd like you to place your hand on that part of your body where the sickness is. I'm going to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, first I rebuke every spirit of sickness, disease, and infirmity that might be holding the life of these ones down. In the name of Jesus, I ask that your healing anointing, grace, gifts, grace, healing anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ ooze out unto the people that are thirsty and hungry for your word and for your anointing right now. Let that healing power touch them. Wherever the sickness is, let I command it to disappear. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. The supernatural power of God rest upon you. And let the healing anointing like an oil drop into your spirit. Like as if you drop something liquid and it's going to form a compound and it's going to cleanse everything that is iniquity or infirmity of your body. I ask that the blood of Jesus Christ drop now. And as it drops into your spirit, your soul, and your body, everything that is wrong with your mind, with your soul, with your body, and with your physical organs, may they receive healing by that drop of the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. May that one drop of the blood on your life, may it change the equation of your life from sick zone, death zone, to living zone, and to life zone. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Until tomorrow, be healthy wealthy and strong. <coughs> God bless you.